We'll hear next from um, Carla Zombro from California Calls. Hello, I am Carla Zombro. I'm the field director for California Calls. Being that my last name is Zombro, I'm accustomed to coming last, and I am keenly aware of the fact that I'm the last speaker between you and your lunch break. Yeah. It feels like Yom Kippur today. So, this is... <laughs> so I'll be brief. <laughs> yeah. That's it. All right. So, uh, but last but not least. Last yeah, no, I get that a lot. <laughs> I sure do. Um, so California calls, no one's heard, we're really horrible at promoting ourselves, but we've actually done some pretty big stuff over the last several years. We are an uh, alliance of 31 organizations smeared all over the state um, in 12 counties. Um, and these are local organizations from a foster care agency in San Bernardino, to a group fighting for clean water in Tulare County, to groups a lot of us have heard of, like Community Coalition and Scope here in Los Angeles. Um, and our major part of our strategy is to really change the electorate in California. We had this crazy idea years back that while we're all doing excellent work locally, maybe if we band together statewide, we can actually scale up and have a major impact. And in five years, we've contacted about 820,000 voters through 13 statewide civic engagement programs. 625,000 of them support our long-term agenda which is the subject of another hearing, actually, that I'm sure is coming up this year. But I'll just talk about the voter engagement part. Um, we focus on infrequent voters, low-income communities of color. In Los Angeles, about 200,000, right exactly 200,000 of the 625,000 supporters statewide are in LA. Um, we do our work through large-scale phoning. Um, there, we have phone banks, predictive dialing system all across the state. We use PDI religiously, so it's a very data-driven program. Uh, we do door-to-door -to, -door to mobilize voters. We've developed, over time, tailored messages so that we can really focus on what is the impact of these ballot initiatives and why voting is important, rather than just sticking, sticking to just the technical and, and process parts of it. And we found that it works. Um, we also talk to people, one thing that's this really cool but really weird about us is we talk to people even when there's not an election happening. And only three of our 13 programs actually focused on a ballot initiative. Um, we don't deal with candidates. We will happily take a lot of credit for putting Prop 30 over the top. Um, California Calls turned out 440,000 supporters, which really closed the gap. If they hadn't turned out, we may not have won that really important initiative. Um, so over the, over the years, we've, we've tried a lot of stuff. And one thing we found is that even when we weren't working on ballot initiatives, we still had higher turnout. But let me brag a little bit about last fall. Because we have PDI, I actually do have some numbers on what our turnout was. And across the state, our turnout was 54%. Normally, I wouldn't be proud of that, but in an election that had 42% turnout, that's pretty good. And here in LA, our turnout was 47%, 16% higher than what LA County uh, turnout was. And African Americans, 55%. Latinos, 49%. And API voters, although really, it's actually advancing justice to talk to more of them, but, but those that we talked to had 57% turnout. And so we know that actually talking to people and, and having someone from the neighborhood have a conversation about this is why it's important for our neighborhood takes it from that really far away, LA is so big level, to really having a neighbor to neighbor conversation. And um, my dad, he's, he's an old farm boy from West Virginia, and he often says that figures don't lie, but liars do figure. So we've actually been studied. They've taken control groups from MIT, Yale, the Irvine Foundation is, is looking at right now, UC San Diego, and it's proven the same thing. So it's not, it's not just us projecting how great we are. We've actually had it studied, and, and the fact is that that one-to-one -one from a trusted messenger in the community works. To talk about the point about vote by mail, we, we, um, we did actually test out a program a couple of years ago in the Central Valley where folks went door to door in their own neighborhoods to register people to vote. And you know, as well as I do and everyone else here, that's a really slow way <laughs> to find a lot of people to register to vote. So what we also did was we actually asked people to also, if they were registered, sign up to be a permanent absentee voter. And the results were stunning. 80% of the people we talked to 
agreed, and this was predominantly like 75% Latino folks in small farm towns as, as well as the cities of Fresno and Bakersfield. Now this is a, the, the first program I don't think will always have phenomenal results like that, but, but, but the point that I want to make is that radio ads, well I guess they do talk, but they don't respond to questions. Neither, bu bus ads don't talk, mailers don't talk, all of those things are important. We have to have materials in language, we have to have materials that, that are visual and motivating. We need to make voting fun and awesome. And, and yeah, we should have snacks and music, you know? Um, but, but, but really, it, it's that one-on-one -on -one conversation among neighbors, that, that field work, that campaigns do a little bit with those five of five people, um, but that when we when we talk to the infrequent voters, we are increasing turnout dramatically. And um, and so in terms of from okay, so I can tell you that this is great, but but we're a community organization. Um, our our work sometimes takes positions on that. But in terms of like things that government can do about that, I mean, first of all, like set up Dean Logan to succeed and the registrars across the state to actually have the resources to do this level of outreach. In the census, aside from the census takers, there was actually funding and, and we were one among many, many groups who actually went out and just did community outreach, letting people know the census was coming, here's why it's important for us, and we, we connected it to local issues in the community, and it was really successful. When ACA was coming, um, the first round, Aside from, again, the, the people doing the intake, the California Endowment basically hired hundreds of organizers across the state to go out and just tell people, this is coming, let's get past all the rhetoric, here's why it's important. And people who, who otherwise would never have known that they'd be eligible for Medi-Cal signed up and registered as a result of their work. So there are ways in which we have made the investment in straight up outreach and prioritize the areas that were less likely to do, fill out the census or less less likely to sign up for ACA. We prioritized those areas and we closed a lot of the gaps in participation. And, and if, we, if we look at great models that have closed participation gaps in terms of voting, I think there's a lot of great ideas that admittedly are political and they cost money, um, but are worth the fight to, to try and figure out how we can implement. How do you determine who you target? We, um, like I said, we work with local community organizations, and so they actually do basic, like, I'll give you the example of Community Coalition. It's right here in South LA. They did a lot of work around Martin Luther King Park, and so they picked all the precincts around there. They also have um, a set of leaders of their organizations who are very active, so they pick the precincts those people live in so that they're talking to their own neighbors. And then who within those precincts, it's, it's literally everybody. So we talk to people who are likely, and we also talk to people who are not as likely to vote. They're all on the list. We experimented a little bit with how do we better target in on young voters, and interestingly, two to one, we found them on the doors. They so don't answer the phone, and actually a huge, I think about 40%, didn't have their phone number listed. And so the only way to find them was at the door, and if they were home, mom made them answer the door, so they had to answer the door. And um, about 60% of the young people that we talk to, it's door to door, which is slow, but it's such a high quality contact, it, it, it changed, it was a game changer in terms of their turnout. Mm, okay. And we, again, we, we, we over-target the people who are the most disenfranchised, who most really need right. that high-quality touch, and so heavily African-American, Latino, Asian, low-income areas, but the local groups based on the work that they're doing locally, because last thing is that after each program, then they go back to the people who were really into what they were talking about, and they follow up with them, and they engage them year-round in, in just local work, whether it's better schools in East LA or clean water in Tulare. This is what this is exactly what Professor Levinson was talking about in one of the other yeah. panels. Yeah, fantastic. All right. Well, please, um, please also share your, some of your reports or statistics from your efforts with the committee, and I'd love to get a chance to see them. Well, really, really appreciate everyone's thoughts. Uh, great work you're doing, um, and and um, ultimately, you know, as we're trying to craft policies that seek to you know boost voter turnout uh, from a legislative perspective we really want to make sure you weigh in and engage with us and talk with us about uh, your ideas and your your experiences from the field um, we've got actually got a, a, a list of some some really great public comment um, who some folks are going to come up and speak on on the dais on the, uh, at the podium up here 
Okay. All right. Well, so we guess we could do three at a time. They can come sit up at the panel. But thank you so much, guys. Really, really appreciate it. Very helpful. Um, so my, my friend John Mirish uh, on the Beverly Hills City Council is here. I think Nate Kaplan from C Political, and I know Alexis uh, Aria over here as well. So why don't you guys come up and and um, and Max Kanan as well. I see over here is going to come up and speak.